He's the first and the last. He's the creator. He's the almighty. Pray that God will take absolute control over this town, Huddersfield, the UK and the entire world in Jesus' name. I will pray that salvation will come into as you listen this very day. We pray that God will bring people out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And we pray that you will we pray that you will be born again. We pray that you will be transformed by the renewing of your minds through the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that God will destroy the yoke of sin and crime and evil and wickedness from this town and from the entire UK and the entire world in Jesus' name. We pray that you listen and be blessed. Even as we present to you the word of God, we present to you this day the Lord Jesus Christ. The world has been deceived. The world has been lied to. Many people choose darkness instead of light. Many people choose lies instead of truth. The Bible says, Woe to those who call bitter, sweet and sweet bitter, who call a lie truth and truth lies, who says the bad things are good and say the good things are bad. I will present to you today the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He is the only one who can save you. The world has been deceived. Hollywood and TV and whatsoever, they've tried to bring down the name of Jesus Christ. But that's a lie. They try to make Jesus Christ look cheap. But that's a lie. Some people use the name of Jesus Christ as a swear word or as a curse word. Or they use the name, the, the name of the Lord in vain. And that's blasphemy. People who use the name of Jesus Christ loosely. But he's our Lord. He's our creator. He's our savior. The world, this world needs a savior. And the only savior we have is Jesus Christ. Amen. All the problems in this world today can be traced to sin. All the problems and all the disasters and all the evils and all the wickedness in this world today can be traced to sin trace any evil or any wickedness any sin any destruction you will find the root cause is sin but there's a solution and that solution is the lord jesus christ but the world today has made it made the name of jesus christ so common and so cheap they try to bring him down every time they, they release new movies and they try to make caricature of our lord jesus christ but that's danger that's danger. Many people will say there is no God. The Bible says, the fool says in his heart, Psalms 14.1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. This world has been deceived. The Bible is true. It has been tested and trusted over 2,000 years. And the Lord Jesus Christ keeps appearing to people and warning people through dreams, through visions of coming danger, coming destruction coming judgment but people still take it as a joke as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the last days Noah went about warning people of coming destruction that God would destroy the old world with water and rain he warned people for many years hundreds of years he warned people there's destruction coming there's judgment coming listen but many people took it uh, as a joke. Well, it's not a joke. When the rain started, then we doing? realized. Good to see you. I'm going to go at least today. Noah I'm out had been right. But then it was yeah. too late. Good to see you again, mate. Good to see you too. It's good to see you too. 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 Prepare for judgment. Yeah. Right, I'll let there you carry on. So. All right. I mean, I give up trust, but I'll meet Sunday at 12 and then we'll go to Bradford Legacy. So, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I stayed in all day yesterday, we've so it's good to get out of here. Absolutely, yeah. God bless, God bless you. God bless you. But we need to be prepared. Many people, they take out time to prepare for holidays. You're going to, you're going to, uh, to Spain for holidays. Some people take one year. Oh, I'll, I'm going for holidays in Spain or Portugal or Italy. And they use one whole year to prepare for that holiday. Some people prepare for exams. And they could spend nights and hours reading, studying, just to pass an exam. At the end, you just get a certificate, a piece of paper, which is trash. Some people spend so much time to prepare 
for interviews, job interviews, they spend a lot of time reading, preparing, we have to prepare for the interview. In the end, they get the job and they hate the job. But we are coming here today to prepare for judgment. Prepare for your appointment with your maker. Prepare for your appointment with your creator. Every one of us will die. Surely, we are going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to meet God and He's going to judge us based on our works, based on our deeds, based on our words. <laughs> made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, thou has made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee, O great mighty God. Great in counsel, mighty in thee. Nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee, O oh, great mighty God, great in counsel, almighty indeed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Walking daily with the Saviour's side Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or do you rest in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb All your garments spotless are the white as snow Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh with his robes we white Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless or the white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Washed in the blood. In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, men and women? Come to Jesus. 
from your passion and pride. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stained or lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you all evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, wonder-working power in the blood. Of the land, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. Men and women of Huddersfield, we have just been singing there.
There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. It says this in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 it says the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. So the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse from all sin. Now that's good news men and women. It's good news to the ears, the eyes of the men and women of this town to, today to hear the good news that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Now some of you walking past me today may feel that God can't forgive your sin because you're so bad. But that's a lie from the devil. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. I was reading as well yesterday how we are justified by his blood. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he shed his blood at Calvary. We've just been singing about that. That the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches that that his back, it was, it was ripped open, my, men and women, ripped open by a cat of nine tails. And the, the blood of Jesus was spilt there when those Roman soldiers, uh, they scorched Jesus. And the blood of Jesus was spilt when the nails were driven through his hands and through his feet. The blood of Jesus was spilt by the crown of thorns upon his head. The blood of Jesus was spilt when a soldier um, pierced Jesus' side and blood and water came, came out. So the blood of Jesus was spilt and there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus to cleanse you of all your stain, the stain of sin which is on your life. Men and women of, of Huddersfield. My name is David and I'm down here with Brother Edmund. And we're down here uh, with the purpose to preach the gospel to you. To preach the good news to you. To tell you of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. To tell you of his, his death. I was reading today and reminded... How the death of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus was far superior and also quite different to that of the sacrifice of animals that the Jewish nation uh, used to administer in their temple. Now animals can't voluntarily uh, lay down their lives. But the Lord Jesus Christ did. The Lord Jesus Christ, he willfully, uh, with all the faculties of his brilliant mind and understanding, he chose, he chose to leave heaven. He chose to become a man. He chose to live a holy life before God on earth. And he chose... To willfully give his life upon the cross. That his blood will be spilt for us. That we might be cleansed. That we might be justified in his sight. Now isn't that good news men and women? That the God of heaven. The holy, righteous and just God of heaven. Is willing to justify sinners. Who repent and who believe in his son that the holy God of heaven is willing to cleanse sinners of all their guilty stain that men and women who are guilty before God can have a clean conscience in the sight of God 
when they come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when they are cleansed from head to toe of all their transgressions, all their wicked deeds that they have done. Now that's true for you. You know, you're walking past me and many of you think, oh, that's, you know, religious stuff. It's not for me. I'm into me football. I'm into going to the pub with me mates. You know, I'm into those sort of things. But let me put this to you. That Jesus Christ, he gave his life on the cross for all of us. The Bible says that all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus gave his life on the cross for all. It was the just men and women giving his life for the unjust. That we might be brought to God. Now that's the important thing. That's the important thing for the men and women of Huddersfield today. Are you going to be brought into a right relationship with God? Are you going to continue in your selfishness? Living for self-gratification. Living for your pleasures no matter what they are. And then eventually stand before God. And be judged by Him for how you've lived. But what's happened is, since God created man, mankind has decided to run with the devil, to follow the devil, instead of following Jesus Christ. Who are you following? Right, so you're following the devil then. If you worship, if you worship idols, you're worshiping demons, you're worshiping devils. They are false gods, they are inventions of men, and the Bible teaches that when a man bows down to an idol, they are worshipping demons. It's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God and stop making excuses for your sin. The Bible says that idolaters shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says... That's called idolatry. It's sin. No, it's not. It's you sin. It's religion. It is a religion, but it's a false religion, and it's. And when you bow down to idols, you're worshiping demons. We're not worshiping demons. You don't think you're worshiping no. demons, but you are worshiping demons. When you worship false gods, you're worshiping demons. Well, you're doing it anyway. The Bible says that idolaters shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. That's what the Bible says. I'm sorry, but it sounds like heaven's just going to be full of lame asses. No, it sounds like heaven is going to be full of happiness, full of peace, full of righteousness, full of light, and full of joy. And that hell is going to be full of pain, full of torment, full of weeping full of hatred, full of anguish. That's what it sounds like. That's what it is. So I've been talking through the Ten Commandments. I've just mentioned a sin. I'm just showing what it says in the Bible. God has already judged. God has already said that if you worship a false god, you are committing the sin of idolatry. What is a false god? I'm a god. A false god. Well, there you go. There's a false god. <laughs> Roasted by the man in the square. Like, so, <laughs> so it says, as I says, it says in the Ten Commandments, it says, You shall have no other gods before me. So a false god, a false god is any god, okay, that is not the creator god. The god who made heaven and earth. The living god. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The God who's revealed himself in the Bible. So if any person, so if any person worships any other God, other than the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, is worshipping a false God. So the gods of Hinduism are all false gods. The gods of ancient paganism is a false god. Zeus 
is a false god. So you're saying that any god that you Aphrodite in, is a false god. Any god you don't believe in is a false god, basically. Diana is a false god. What are you talking about? Okay. Men and women worship gods of their own imagination. For example, people come up to me quite often and say, God doesn't judge. Well, that person is believing in a God of their own imagination. That's a false God. So God does judge. God is a judge. God is a judge. The Bible says, Abraham says, will not... Some weird old caveman... Will not the God, will not the God of all the earth do what is right? Will not the judge of all the earth do what is right? The Bible says, God, the Bible says, God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. How do you feel about that, sir? Wicked, that God is angry with the wicked every day. You're pushing Am I the wicked? Am I the wicked? You're pushing your beliefs onto other people. Am I the wicked? Well, who do you live for? Do you live for God or do you live for self? I live for my family, mate, because they're the most important thing to me in the whole world. My family has been through some shit. I've been bullied, I've had depression, my mum's been hit by my dad, all right? So don't say that I'm going to live for myself or anyone else. Well, I'm sorry. I don't live for my family. Listen, They're I'm sorry. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry to hear you've been through all this, right? But, but what a man, what a person is to do, a person is to put God first. A person is to put God first. God is your maker. He's the one, he's the one that's created you. No, your mum and dad, okay, your mum and dad, were used by God to bring you into this world. But God is the maker and creator of all things. God is the creator and maker of all things. And every single one of you are accountable to God. Every single one of you are accountable to the God who has made you. When you die, you're going to stand before God. And you're going to give an accounting of your life before God. How have you lived in your life, sir? Have you opened up to God about your mistakes? I, no, actually, I opened up to the Andy Mans Club, mate, who are a mental health club, and they've done more work for me than any church could, and I've only been twice. I mean, all right, yeah, I still have my battles with my demons every day, like everyone else in this whole town does and the whole world does. But you know what? It's not about religion. Join the religion that helps you. It's how you help yourself. Yes, but the organisation, the counselling that you're receiving, has not got the power to take away your sins and give you eternal life. Jesus Christ takes away our sins. The Lord Jesus Christ came to earth to suffer and die on our cross to save sinners, to save a sinner like you. No, this is preaching. This is called preaching. This is what I'm doing today. I'm preaching the Word of God. I'm preaching the Word of God. You look at your life, young man. Yeah, I do look at my life, mate, and I'll admit, yeah. I'll have you stolen? No, have I stolen? Have you lied about somebody? What do you call somebody who's lied? What, are you sorry? what do you call somebody who tells lies? Okay. It says in the Bible, it says, you shall not commit adultery. Have you committed adultery? I haven't even been in a proper relationship, so I can't even commit adultery. But listen to this. The Lord Jesus Christ said, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her, he's committed adultery with her in his heart. Oh, mate, that's, how we, that's how you get attracted. You notice someone, you look at the beauty and you think, oh, Have you looked at a woman and lusted after her in your heart? Sorry. Have you looked at a woman and lusted after her in your heart? Yeah. Well, the Mormon church is a cult, okay? I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm preaching the, the true Christian, Christian faith, okay? Yeah. 
all that, right? Any one of them are all supposed to be a man of God, we, or man, woman of God, whichever version they follow. Yeah. So she did that to me. I mean, I admit, I admit some mistakes on site because of my, my anxiety, all right? I'll hold on to it. She strung me along knowing after I'd just lost my grandfather to mm. cancer, all right? So where's God there? Why is he not punishing her for that, you know? Well, listen, it says this also in the Bible, okay? It says, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. It says, he will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Have you used the name of Jesus or the word Christ as a swear word, as a curse word? It's, I know, but what you're saying there, you're saying everybody. If you stood before a judge, okay, for, uh, for theft, Right. If you stood before a judge for any crime you had committed and you said to the judge, everybody does it, what would the judge say to you? So if I'm, bear with me, if, I, if, I, if I'm driving along the motorway, okay, and... You know, I make a mistake and I put my foot down and I'm driving at 80 and the police clock me and they pull me over and I says, I made a mistake. Would the police still issue a penalty? So, so it makes no difference if you say, well, it was a mistake that I blasphemed your name, God. It was a mistake that I lied about you. It was a mistake that I looked at a woman and lusted after her. The Bible says, okay, the Bible says that fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's somebody who has sex outside of marriage. Have you committed that sin? No, I haven't. Right, I'm waiting for the right person to come along. Good. Well done. Right, Good. I'm not even religious for that. It also says, it says that drunkards <laughs> shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It says that drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you ever get drunk on alcohol? Drunkenness is sin in the eyes of God. But there's a difference between drinking diluted wine, a small amount of diluted wine, than intoxicating yourself with alcohol to the point where you are drunk. But when you have a few beers, are you drunk? Are you intoxicated? Have you been drunk on alcohol? See, you keep on pointing to other people. It makes no difference. You're guilty before God for how you've lived yourself. Because you're admitting, you're admitting, okay, that you've lied. You're admitting that you've looked with lust. You've admitted that you've been drunk. You've admitted that you've blasphemed God. When you stand before God, young man, when you stand before God on the day of judgment, are you going to stand before him guilty or not guilty? Are you going to stand before God guilty or not guilty? When you stand before God on the day of judgment, are you going to stand when you stand before God on the day of, day of judgment? When you stand before God, say you are a hypocrite. You're saying you're a Christian. You're effing and blinded. You are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. I'm a Christian. I'm not a Christian. Then effing and blinding. Sir, when you stand before God on the day of judgment, by your own admission, you've said you've, you've lied. You've said you've looked with lust. You've said you've blasphemed God. You've said you've been drunk on alcohol. Are you going to stand before God guilty or not guilty of sinning against him? You're guilty before God. Do you want to know what the Do you want to know what the penalty is? Do you want to know what the penalty is? The penalty is God's wrath for all eternity in hellfire. And that's where you're heading. You judged. You judged by God. Heaven or hell? Heaven or hell? Heaven or hell. So young man, young man, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. 
This is where the good news comes in. Even though you're guilty before God, God has sent his son Jesus to this world to suffer, to bleed and die on a cross, to pay for our sins. God has raised him from the dead. If you humble yourself to God, if you confess your sins to God, God will hear from heaven. He will save you. He will bring you into his heavenly kingdom. Right now, young man, you're guilty and you're condemned in the eyes of God. And God's wrath is upon you. And you will experience his wrath for all eternity unless you turn from your wicked ways and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered and bled and died on a cross and who God raised from the dead on the third day. God calls out to you, young man, to rethink, to come to your senses, to rethink. Yes, but... Yes, but you can't save yourself. Only Jesus Christ can save you. None of us can save ourselves. No matter how good you try to be, no matter how good you, uh, you are in your life, you are still going to be a guilty sinner. And guilty sinners are going to hell forever. The difference between me and you, sir, I'll tell you the difference. When I, was, when I was 26, I humbled myself to God. I turned to God and I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I put my trust in what God did for me through his son Jesus. And God has taken even away my sin. God has pardoned me of all the wrong that I've ever done. God has forgiven me. The difference between me and you is I'm pardoned and you're not. I'm forgiven and you're not. I'm heading for heaven and you're not. That's the difference between me and you. I'm justified in the eyes of God and you're not. Look, I can't, I can't, I can't hear you. Young man, young man, I can't hear you. Come forward. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm simply preaching the word. I'm asking you questions. I'm asking you questions. I'm asking you questions based on the Ten Commandments. I'm asking you Ten Command. I'm, as I'm asking you questions based on the Ten Commandments and based on other areas of the Bible which show what sin is. And you admitted yourself. You've confessed. You've admitted that you've broken God's law. Yes, but look at it. When you stand before God, you're going to stand there yourself. It makes no difference if everybody has done it. It makes no difference if everybody has done it. Because they're going to be judged themselves for their own sin. Why are you going to extremes and accusing somebody of spreading hate because I'm preaching against your sins? You see... What people do is, because people don't like it when free speech is, is challenging their lifestyle, they accuse the person of hate speech. This is just ridiculous. Okay, Stop using that as a weapon to attack me. I'm, I'm basically, I'm a, I'm a Christian man expressing freedom of speech, preaching the word of God, preaching the Bible. And, and I'm, preaching, I'm preaching for your good, young man. I want you to be saved. I want you to be right with God. You see, God has made a way for your sins to be forgiven. God has made a way for your sins to be pardoned. God has made a way for you to enter into the kingdom of God. That's good news. And that way is through His Son. And that way is through His Son. Jesus Christ, He laid down His life upon the cross for you. He suffered and died on the cross to pay for our sins. God raised him from the dead. So if you humble yourself and you turn to God and you believe in Jesus, he's willing to take away your sins. He's willing to forgive you. He's willing to show you mercy and grace and kindness. But it's up to you. You have free will. You can either reject God and go, go your own way and be judged by him when you die. Or you can humble yourself to God while you have breath in your lungs and receive his love 
and receive His kindness, receive His mercy. You can be made a child of God. But you must humble yourself, young man. This is not hate speech. This is love speech. I love the men and women of Huddersfield enough to come and tell you the truth. To speak the truth from the Word of God. It's time to get right with God. Time to get right with God, young man. Time to get right with God. How many of you have been drunk on alcohol? How many of you have lied about somebody? How many of you look at women and lust after them? Look, I'm here to take questions from people and I'm going to answer those questions, okay? Do you want to say your question again so that just everybody... Everybody, what's your name? My name's Charlotte and... Bear with me. Hello everybody, this, this is Charlotte. Charlotte's going to ask a question, okay? And I'm going to answer the question. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an orderly fashion where people can ask questions and then I'll answer the person's question, okay? Alright, I'm after her. Okay, Charlotte. I was baptised and I went to church for most of my life up until about five years ago. And I'm bisexual and if God hates gays and bisexuals so much, why do we exist? Okay. So, first of all, Charlotte says that she's been baptised five years ago. No, when I was born. Okay. I stopped going to church five years ago. All right, she stopped going to church five years ago. She was christened as a child. She says that she's bisexual, which, um, which means that she's happy to sleep with men and women. Um, and, she's, and, she's, and she's saying, why did God... Uh, why did, why did God, why does she exist, why does she exist, um, or why do people exist if he uh, hates homosexuality, okay? Well, well, God, you see, God has created all men. All of us have been created by God. We have our existence by God. And we live in a world of sin. When Adam sinned against God, sin entered into the world. And ever since then, men have chosen to do many things that are wrong in his sight, in his eyes. Wouldn't he kill us if he didn't like us? One question time, okay? In the eyes of God, you see, when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to sex, okay, what is right in the eyes of God, that it's uh, within the confines of a marriage relationship, between a heterosexual man and a heterosexual woman. So that's what's right in the eyes of God. And because God is a righteous and just being, uh, there is right and wrong in these areas. So God, He loves righteousness. God loves righteousness, but He hates sin. And homosexuality is a sin. Lesbianism is sin. Okay. The Bible says, the Bible says, if a man lies with a man, the way a man would lie with a woman, it is an abomination to God. The Bible says that homosexuals shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that lesbianism is vile passion. It's vile passion. It's unnatural and it's vile passion. Therefore, God hates it and God is against it. However, God has made a way for men and women to be forgiven of their sin, to be pardoned of their sin, to be right with Him, when they repent and they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So basically, if Jesus died on the cross for our sins and we don't sin, basically Jesus died for nothing, so shouldn't we sin a little bit? <laughs> yeah, excuse me, excuse me. The reason Jesus died on the cross for our sins was to save us from God's wrath. Guess what? Excuse me, excuse the me. thing is, you've excuse sinned me. in your life. You've sinned in your life. You've sinned in your life. Okay, bear with me. You've sinned in your life. Bear with him. You've sinned in your life, and God is going to judge you for how you've lived when you die. But right now, God has made a way. Right now, God has made a way for you to be saved from your sin, to be saved from His wrath, to faith in Him. Do you have a question? Was it? All right, okay. Like too. Really? Is that sin? Is that sin? Well, what is sin? I, you, you know, you know. I mean, I, 
I've been preaching down here long enough for you to know what is right and what is wrong when it comes to sexuality because I've expressed that openly and publicly. I've already expressed clearly, openly and before the whole of Huddersfield that what's right, what's right when it comes to sexual intimacy is that sexual intimacy is between a heterosexual man and a heterosexual woman. That's what the Bible says. So if a man has sex outside of marriage, looks at pornography, if people commit a sin of lesbianism or man on man homosexuality, they are committing a vile violation of the Lord of God. And God's going to judge you when you die. Do you have a question? Lesbianism is sin. The Bible says, if a woman lies with a woman, if a woman lies with a woman, it is unnatural, it is unnatural, it's vile passion. If a man lies with a man, the way a man would lie with a woman, it is an abomination to God. Because the only thing that's acceptable when it comes to intimacy is that it's between a married man and a married woman. You see, I am a married man. I have a beautiful wife and I have beautiful children. I'm a married man, I have a beautiful wife and I have beautiful children. And this is acceptable in the eyes of God. This is what's acceptable in the eyes of God. And the way that you li young ladies are living is wicked in the eyes of God. Yes. Is wicked in the eyes of God. But God has made a way for you to be saved. God has made a way for the men and women of Huddersfield to be saved. And it's through trusting in what God has done in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, He suffered, He bled, He died upon the cross to pay for our sins. He gave His life as a ransom he gave his life as a ransom for our sins, that we could be reconciled to God, that we could be made right with God. As I said, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, when Jesus Christ came, men and women, he didn't come to pass sentence upon this wicked world, but he came to lay his life down to save sinners like you. To save sinners like all of you. To save sinners like you. To save sinners like all of you. He used to do drugs. He used to be a fucking drug addict. Come on. It's time to shut You need to understand the gospel. Christ came to save sinners. He's already saved a sinner like you. Well, he shouldn't be talking bad about people. Ladies, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. I know because because you've loved me so much, isn't it? You've loved me so much. No. You're stalking me. I'm sure you're stalking me. Are you stalking me on the internet? Are you stalking me on the internet? Are you trolls? Are you trolls stalking me on the internet? Wow. Yes. It's time to get right with God, men and women. It's time to get right with God. You need to get right with God. What, what is right with God then? Explain to me what's right with God. What is right? Well, I'll tell you how a person can get right with God. Okay, tell me. Right, okay. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I'm going to answer that anyway, right? I'll tell you how a person can get right with God. You can be right with God when you repent. When you When you rethink. And you turn to God and turn your back upon sin. 
Sing it! I am a sinner. You live for self. You live for self. You live for self gratification. You're living for the pleasures of this world. And, and you're heading closer and closer and closer to hellfire. I would have to go to hell anyway. Hell is a place of weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. There's no love there. Hell's, hell's a place of hate. In hell, you'll be a disgusting creature. I'm preaching the gospel. They don't have to be here. I'm telling. I, I tell you as well. I tell you as well. If you don't repent, if you don't turn from your wicked ways. You're going to perish in hell forever. The good news is that God has made a way for you don't have to go to hell. God has made a way for you to be delivered from the wrath to come. And it's through Jesus Christ. Yeah, unbelievers are going to hell. Unbelief is a choice. Yes, I know. I know. It's a wrong choice. Not I'll hold it. So if all gays are going to hell, then I don't want to go to heaven because hell's going to be the best. Exactly. Hell will be the best. Hell will be the best. You see, right now, right now, while you've got life in you, you've got breath in your lungs. Okay. You can you can laugh. You can laugh about hell while you've got while you've got breath in your lungs. You can laugh and joke about hell. But when you're burning in hell for all eternity, you'll not be laughing. You'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity. And because because I love the men and women of Huddersfield, I come down here to warn you of hellfire. God doesn't want you to perish in hell. God doesn't want you to perish in hell. I don't want you to perish in hell. And that's why I'm here to tell you how to be saved from hellfire through Jesus Christ. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. You can either you can either go on your own way. You can either go on through life your own way, doing your own thing, rejecting God, rejecting Jesus Christ, and you will suffer. You will suffer the consequences of that when you die. You will suffer the consequences of your choices when you die, because the Bible says it is appointed for man once to die. After this, the judgment. You see, when you die, you are going to be judged by God. When you die, you're going to be judged by your Creator, your Maker. I'm saved. My sins have been pardoned. I've turned. I've stopped being a drug addict. I've stopped being uh, immoral. I've stopped being a liar. I've turned. For, yes, you can. So you know, like smoking weed and shit. Is that like a sin to smoke weed? Yeah. This this young lady has asked a good question. She's asked, "Is it sin to smoke weed?" Right. When, right. When you, when you are sip, uh, when you are supping on bongs, when you are supping on bongs, right? You are dazed and confused, right? God said, God said, be sober-minded. God said, be sober-minded. When you are smoking joints of marijuana. When you are when you are sipping on sipping on bongs, okay, you are no longer you are no longer sober-minded. So it's sin. It is sin to get high on weed. The difference is I've stopped being a drug addict and I've received Jesus Christ. Yeah, but listen, listen. My sins have been taken away. Jesus has taken away my sins. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I live a holy life. Can you hold me Bible? I live a holy life. Yes, yes. Yes. I have a question 
God can save. God can save potheads. God saves potheads. Jesus' blood is wine, and if you drink wine, you're not sober. So how is that? Right? Well, there's a big difference. There's a big difference between drinking diluted wine, a small amount of diluted wine, then drinking, then drinking alcohol to the point you are intoxicated. For example, to be intoxicated on alcohol, you must have a certain amount of alcohol to go through your liver to be intoxicated. If you have diluted wine at communion, if you have diluted wine at communion, it can not make you drunk. You need to boot the booze. You need to boot the booze. You need to sap the smirn off. You need to ice the spice. You need to kick the cans. You need the bong out of your life. You need the joints out of your life. You need the marijuana out of your life. Because it's leading you to hell. It's leading you all to hell. Don't do that, please. Come on, let's have let's have order. If God don't want to women, why did He make them so hot? Exactly. Yes, God did make women beautiful. That is true. But He created women. But He created women for the man. He created women for the man. Men, men and women are compatible. You see? Where do babies come from? Where do babies come from? Yeah, a wife, a wife should submit to a husband. That's true. A wife should submit unto her husband. That's what the Bible says. You can't ask questions. I've got to hold it, okay? When did anybody ask? <laughs> when did somebody ask? Okay. Well, God, you see, God is the ruler. God is the ruler. God, God is the, God is the creator. He is the ruler of the whole universe. He knows what is right. He knows what's best for mankind. And he created the woman for the man. No, there's a big difference, okay? There's a difference. There's a difference between drinking alcohol and getting drunk. You see? The wine, the type of wine, the type of wine they used to drink was wine that was not fermented and they also drank wine. They also drank wine that was fermented, but they used to water it down and use it responsibly. Those who got drunk, those who got drunk on wine were sinning. Those who got drunk on wine were committing sin. Isn't God supposed to accept everyone for who they are? No, God doesn't accept everybody for who they are. No. The Bible says, listen to this, the Bible says, the face of the Lord is against those who does evil. The face of the Lord... Well, if you, did, if you didn't care, you wouldn't be following me on the internet. If, if, you, if you didn't care, you wouldn't be following me on the internet. If you didn't care, you wouldn't organize a big group to come down while I'm preaching. Okay. Well, who did? This is clearly, this is clearly organized. This is clearly organized. The question? Yeah. If, if being gay is a sin, then why did God make us gay? The thing is, God is not the one that made you gay. You chose to be gay. And it's not okay to be gay. It's not okay to be gay and don't damage stuff. The Bible says, the Bible says that homosexuals shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't come into possession of the kingdom of God if you're living the homosexual lifestyle. Okay. God calls out to you to repent. God calls out to you to turn from this wickedness and believe in his son. Do you want to know what else it says in the Bible? It says, it says, 
It says God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with how you girls are living. He's angry with how you girls are living. And you're going to experience the wrath of God in hellfire for all of eternity unless you repent. Unless you repent. Girls and girls feel towards each other, affect you, so you're kind of gay. Well, what I'm saying is this, okay? I don't, de I don't deny that you have got affections towards one another, but the Bible calls these vile passion. The Bible calls it vile passion, okay? Can I ask you a question? Bear with me, okay? But look at, look at this, okay? I'm not, I'm not here today to pick on the sin of homosexuality. Se heterosexual sex outside of marriage is sin. Adultery is sin. Looking at pornography is sin. No. Sex. Excuse me, please don't stump out your cigarettes on me shoes, okay? That's, that's taking it too far. That's taking it too far. I'm not using no swear words or nothing. Do you have a question? I don't have a good question. Okay. Well, I've got to hold the mic, okay? Is it alright for government to screw men, women, black or white? No, it's not. No, it's not. Are they homosexual then? Because they're fucking us all too. Well, look. I can't chew. You've got my face on camera now. I don't care, but I can't chew about six weeks ago, didn't I? No, no, I answered your answer, you answer, you question. I know. You're, you're, I know, you're very unhappy, you're very unhappy with the government, okay? You're very unhappy with the government, okay? Can I ask you a question? Yes, you can ask a question. Thank you, thank you. Right, so you're the one that's sitting here talking about gay people and stuff. Well, why are you thinking about gay people? You think thinking about men having sex, so then you are gay. No, that's not, that's not true. I mean, if you... You know, I, I know that many of you have, have, have uh, saw my videos on on the internet and 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 you'll see you'll see that I preach against all sin. Tell the people the truth about smart meters. You'll see you'll see you'll see that I preach against all sin. I preach against all sin. All sex outside of heterosexual marriage is sin. Looking at pornography is sin. Looking at pornography is sin. No, I'm... I've got joy. I've got joy. So if being gay is a sin, why did we choose to be gay? If we chose to be gay, then why why is it you know what I mean? How is it a sin? Like if it's so bad, why would we choose to be gay? Because yeah, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. You see the thing is you're unwilling right now, you're unwilling to submit to God. You're unwilling to submit to him and allow him to rule over you. The thing is right now you want to rule your own life. You want to do your own thing and go your own way. And because of that, you can start to have feelings, right? Feelings towards the same sex. And when you follow through on those feelings, when you follow through on those feelings and actually have sex with a woman, you're committing sin. You're committing sin. And it's the same, it's the same for you young, young men who've had who grew up, you start to have feelings towards the same sex, and when you've lied with another man, you've committed the sin of homosexuality. It's not your business who somebody sleeps with. It's not your business who somebody sleeps with. Well, I'm just, I'm just preaching God's word, seeing what's right and wrong. That's what I'm doing. What I'm, let me tell you what I'm saying, right? This is what it says, right? If you remember, if you remember those first pages of the Bible, God made a man in his image and his likeness. And then God made a woman for the man. And it's from that relationship comes families, okay? This is what's natural and normal. And this is God's holy standard. It says in the Bible, it says that, that marriage is honorable among all and the bare and defile but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The Bible says that homosexuals shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you know what's 
Uh, yeah. Could people be quiet? This lady has a question, all right? <laughs> so do you think you're going to heaven because you're like pushing your own religion on people? And like, you, you no, can believe no, no, let us speak. I can believe what I want to believe and you're pushing it onto me. And it's just like disrupting everyone here. Like I, I'm just gay. I want to be gay. I can't help being gay. So I'd rather be gay than, I, yeah, I'd rather be gay than like men. Yeah. Okay, well, we said a lot there, okay, that's fine, okay. No, the reason why the reason why I'm going to heaven is because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour. I've, I've turned from being a sinner and trusted in Jesus and now I live I live for Jesus Christ. Okay? But you have a question. Yes you can. Right, if, right, you say that being gay is wrong, but you're still here worshiping a man, a man, so you yeah. <laughs> I'm worshipping your God. I'm worshipping your God. He's still your God. He still needs you. You deny him. You deny his existence, but he's still your God. He's still your creator. Come on. Please don't turn it off, okay? Because I'm allowing other people to speak as well, alright? Right, so you say that I should only date men. I'm saying you should keep yourself for marriage until you meet a husband, a man.